Brittany is right now fighting with the sanctions of the NCAA right now because um, uh, the UMass actually uh, sent her two, 250, direct deposit $252 uh, into her bank account and then um, are now sanctioning the school uh, and all this crap that's going on. They're taking away wins and championships and all the crap. And I think the NCAA needs to open up their eyes because if they don't, you, you're going to see these players slowly but surely, not tennis players, but the future athletes, professional athletes decide, you know what? <laughs> I'm not going to play college sports. I'm not even going to waste my time. I want to make money. Half these kids are coming from poor families or come from families that don't have money. And they go over there because they want to call their parents want them to go for a college education. But the truth is they're only going there for one or two years to, to, to obviously, uh, so they, they can have, they have the opportunity to move into the NFL draft or the NBA draft, the one year one and done uh, because that's the rules with the NBA right now. And the NFL, it's two years and uh, your third year you can go into the NFL and, and to me it's it, it's all sanctioned I think that when you look at the big picture even Brittany uh, coming out and, and and not she's not attacking the NCAA she's not doing that she's saying that there has to be some kind of fairness to what's going on uh, not only in her sport but all the sports and you can't look at one sport and say because they're bringing and generating more money uh, that uh, they're going to just get pushed to the side and they're attacking a smaller school and a uh, sport that doesn't bring in as much revenue. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well said. Very well said. Um, yeah. I think it, you know, just kind of goes back to the well being of collegiate athletes and their safety and how can we ensure that? And it's really hard to do that when the focus is all about who's making the money. So why don't you, uh, to me, I, I would go around, I would try to set something up on Facebook. This is what I would do if I were you. Uh, I would try to get some uh, uh, college athletes that agree with you that will follow through with this. Uh, name, like big name athletes come out and, and join your, uh, uh, your fight against the NCAA and, and have them follow and, and be spokesmen from uh, your fight. I, I think that would be a great idea, uh, Brittany. Uh, you're a young lady. Uh, you can be the spokesman, uh, spokeswoman for uh, the organization, uh, found, maybe even uh, build a foundation through this and, yeah. and help, uh, help raise awareness of what's going on with the NCAA. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to kind of educate myself um, because politics definitely does play a role in this um, and surround myself with you know, really great people. I've just started working with the Drake group who's done NCAA reform for a long time. I'm in contact with Jeremy Bloom, who basically is doing the same thing that I'm doing now 15 years ago. He testified in Congress, which I think I might do later this year to help try and pass legislation. Um, so just like you said, I'm trying to find a circle of people and it seems to be a really great one talking with a lot of lawyers. Um, right now, not, not necessarily to file suit, but um, just to see, you know, what we can all do together, because this is a huge conversation, one that's been going on for a long time. And while this kind of has sucked, I guess, for UMass Tennis, this has really brought out a lot of good and positive things, and I think is moving it towards the right direction. So before we let you go, uh, let's let's come off this and let's talk about some fun things. Mm -hmm. So how are you doing right now in school? Are you a senior? Or are you a junior? Actually, so uh, I actually play professional tennis now. I graduated in 2017, which makes this story even crazier because I'm okay. three years out of school. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm actually from Boston and I'm playing um, professionally now, but things are quiet because of the pandemic. Uh, so, uh, so you want to go and play in Wimbledon, US Open, that kind of stuff, right? Uh, ideally, yes. <laughs> All right. So uh, are you a ranked player? Were you a ranked player in college? Um, in college, I do not believe so, but I'd have to go back and look. Um, but, uh, I know our team, I think got a ranking at one point, but, um, I am WTA ranked, um, in singles and doubles. I, I think I fell quite a bit since the pandemic. I haven't actually played a match since March because of, you know, COVID and the restrictions with, uh, women's tennis right now. I was a pretty good tennis player too. I, I mean, if we played one-on-one, -on -one, I, I, I probably uh, get one point or. <laughs> I, most likely I do throw in double faults time to time. So. Oh yeah. You'll, you'll kill me and you'll probably beat me. Uh, you know, it'll be like, it'll go from 30 love to 40 love to loss. That's, that's, <laughs> that's probably what's going to happen. I mean, I watch, I watch tennis. I played tennis my senior year at uh, high school. I'm sorry. Um, I, 
at the time I, my, my hockey coach told me he didn't want me to run. He didn't want me to play football. My senior year of high school, he said, just strictly play something that is not full contact. I don't want you getting hurt. So I decided it was either golf being, uh, playing for, uh, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't part of the school. I guess you can say it was a, a team that you go and play golf with the, you know, whatever. I forget, what do they call that? Intramuros or something like that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like our club teams. Yeah. yeah. It was a club team or some crap like that, but I didn't want to play golf because I thought it was boring, you know, but so I, I said, you know what, I'm going to go play tennis. I'm going to go try out. So, I mean, you see all these, uh, you see all these beautiful girls and all this. I, I could do this. This is easy. You know? So I stepped on a court and it took a while. I can't serve for crap. I was terrible. I, I mean, but I can run. So I, what they did against me, I, I, I play ping pong. So I was a very good ping pong player when I was a kid. Okay. Very good. Uh, so I knew how to put backspin on a ball, but it, it's completely different in tennis. And, and it took a while. And b- by the way, uh, by the time I was done my senior year, you know, my senior year playing uh, tennis, I was doing, I was second in uh, second in singles and third in doubles. So oh, nice. Yeah, I was pretty good. I was pretty good. I could still couldn't serve. I'm terrible at serving <laughs> to, to this day. I'm terrible, but I can run after a ball and I have so I have such quick reflexes. When I when I was playing sports, I had such quick re- and, and tennis. It's you need. Tennis. Yes. Yeah, I say it's super important for tennis. So well, all sports, of course, but no tennis. Oh, my God. Tennis. Believe it or not. Tennis is the hardest sport I've ever played. It is the hardest sport. I, I'm dead serious. You guys think you you watch tennis players hit a ball over the net and you're running back and forth. It is not easy. Serena Williams, there's a reason why she's one of the greatest tennis players to ever play the game and one of the greatest athletes to ever play. Yeah, tennis players are unbelievable. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, it's uh, once you get started, I think a lot of people like like it when they you know after you know trying it a few times. It's not always everyone's favorite to watch, but I think it's a lot more fun to play. Absolutely. So before we let you go, um, are you following us on social media? Yes, I believe I am. Um, I think we've been kind of sharing the petition back and forth. Um, so yeah, I am. I think I'm all set following you guys everywhere on social media. You, know, you got to follow me on my social media. Don't follow Speedy because uh, Speedy <laughs> is uh, the, the bearded werewolf over there. So he needs to shave a little bit. You should have saw him, Brittany, uh, about a month ago. Uh, what he did was he shaved his beard and he looked like Fred. He kept his mustache like Freddie Mercury because we had a, uh, he, he seriously looked like Freddie Mercury. Um, we had one of, uh, who do we have on? Oh, we had a- uh, Tolik Bortz. Bortz okay. on. He makes a lot of masks for uh, for hockey players and also for in- underprivileged communities. And one of the things he oh. has, is a big advocate of was uh, Movember. Uh, obviously, we've seen we've seen people do that for many different reasons. So I did it for a couple of weeks, yeah. and now I'm officially grew back. Grew back. <laughs> Why not? We're we're in the we can do whatever we want. 2020 has been a tough year. <laughs> well, I want I want to actually reach out to Mr. Bortz and see if he can make you a mask that stands for what is going on with you in the NCAA. And, that would and maybe, awesome. I would maybe, love that. maybe have you guys design something where all the, you know, all the, uh, uh, the submission of what's going on, maybe you going to the Senate and stuff like that, you can wear that mask and show yeah. off and I have love to. and have all the other petition people that are following you to wear the mask too. Yeah, that's a great idea actually, yeah. so. Definitely uh, connect me and uh, I'll be on the lookout for that. Speedy, you there? Mm-hmm. Reach out to Mr. Bortz. Let's uh, hook uh, Mr. Bortz and Brittany up. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, he's, he's a really, really nice guy. He, 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 made, the ma- he made the face masks for the, uh, the NHL, the New York Rangers for the playoffs. Wow. Um, he's, he, he's, he's running a foundation. It's a nonprofit organization. Uh, I think he would absolutely love to do something with you. Yeah, that sounds great. I'm, I'm very about it. So thank you very much for bringing that up. Oh, man. I, I, you know, I'm the greatest, you know, Speedy. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, who, who's lost on that one? Anyways, Brittany, why don't you tell the fans how they can find you on social media? Yeah. Um, oh, man. <laughs> I almost never look at my own social media. I think it's at Britt Collins um, 22. Uh, Collins is with an E and not an I. So that's a little bit different. Um, but yeah, Brittany Collins. I think Britt Collins 22 is everything I use. And uh, the most important thing is getting signatures on our petition so we can appeal this to the NCAA. Send it to us. We'll sign it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. 
Send, send it to us. We'll sign it. And by the way, we'd love to get you on uh, in the near future to talk a little bit about uh, what you're doing moving forward with this and, and whatever we can do to help. We would love to be there and help you. Well, I very much appreciate it. And so does UMass Tennis. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Brittany Collins, ladies and gentlemen, UMass, well, was an ex-UMass tennis player. Three years as a professional. So uh, I'm looking forward to watching her play in Wimbledon or US Open. I am a tennis fan. Believe it or not, I grew up an Andre Agassi fan, a Pete Sampras fan. I watched a lot of tennis when I was a kid. Unfortunately, there are not many good American players besides Serena Williams anymore. So uh, we're hoping maybe Brittany will be the next big ranked American girl tennis player. And I'd be rooting for you, Britt. So uh, thank uh, you. Absolutely.